Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with life coach and the military medium, Dean McMurray. And this is your daily dose of happy. We're so happy you decided to join us today. And Dean, we, um, I, I have a, a little bit of a different topic for us today. Um, oh. which is, no, it, I think it's going to be an interesting one. Um, but I'm, I'm going to bring science into the picture and, oh. uh, which is kind of appropriate because uh, science and technology kind of go together. And, uh, while we were doing the, uh, the, the introduction there, the, the startup with the music, I didn't hear the music. You heard the music. Everybody else heard the music. I didn't hear the music. So this is a good day to bring science in, I think. You know? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, no, actually what I wanted to do was, um, well, I wanted to tell a couple of stories. I'll do those in a moment about stuff that I've been, uh, interceding with <laughs> over the last couple of days or so. Um, but I want to give like a little preamble, which is that, we operate in a community of people, a large community of people who are interested in spiritual stuff, law of attraction, often called conscious creators and so on and so forth. And I think most of them are, most of the people who are involved are, are honest. They're straightforward. They're actually some of the best people in the world. A lot of them are listeners and I love that. Um, but there's also this small segment that's always been there and we're all aware of it of people who they, they basically are scammers. They're just trying to, you know, jump on board and, and scam people and pull the wool over their eyes and so forth. And that's, that's always bugged me a little bit. Now, as a consciously budding conscious creator, someone who's, you know, continuously working on improving, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time focused on this because this is not something that I like. And I try to take right. my attention off of that. Right, right. But there are times I like to pay a little attention to it because I think that there is a great potential for the scientific community to warm up to what we talk about. What concerns me is, well, I don't want to be doing things that would actually drive them away. Whoops, there goes my microphone. And you have to see that, look at that. Science. I just start talking about it. It Science. just goes Physics. right away. <laughs> <laughs> You're repelling us. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and, and that's what I perceive happens with, you know, the, I think the scammers is basically we're saying the scammers gives us all a bad name that we really don't deserve to have because I think what we're pursuing is legitimate. I think it's good and useful and, and you know, has served the lives of a lot of people. But there's also that segment. And I ran into a couple of examples of it in just the last 12 hours, really, not even 24 hours that I wanted to tell you a story about. First one, uh, somebody had shared in a Facebook group um, one of these uh links to, you know, here's how to break through on your limiting beliefs and so forth. And they were selling a program, one of these squeeze pages where there's like hours and hours of stuff talking about, you know, how terrible it is that you can't get what you want. We have the answers and all that kind of stuff. And they had a product they were selling. And, you know, most of the time I just ignore that one. But this one I paid a little attention because the headline said that this was backed by Harvard scientists. And that's where I started to say, oh, this, that, that's the part that kind of gets me a little bit. So I wanted to find out, is it true? Is what they're saying true? Is there actually Harvard science behind it? And well, and, and was this somebody that just went to some community college named Harvard that <laughs> took a science class? No, serious. And saying, well, could we in theory say it's backed by a hard Harvard scientist? And some people I would share is that. You know, sometimes stretch the truth almost to the point where it's misleading. Yes. You know, and it's exactly. like, okay, technically in that scenario, okay, yeah, they didn't allude to that it was hard. You know, and, and of course, I'm just, you know, making assumptions, but, um, you know, sometimes that can happen as well. And I, and I want to share before you get in your story, Walt. Okay. Is that, you know, scammers and people come in every shape, size, and industry. Um, mm. Not only what, you know, the law of attraction, but, and of course, hello, what do I do? You know, there's er ever since mediums and psychics really hit oh, the yeah. public eye, right? You think of the Fox sisters, right? And, and they were, even though they were kind of, uh, seen as the founding, not the founding fathers, maybe the founding sisters, but <laughs> spiritual in a sense, but they, they were found to kind of be frauds mm. and there was a lot of that. And there yeah. still is, unfortunately, there is, um, but there is in every industry, right? Yes. And yes. 
So you have to do your due diligence and hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I just wanted to add that is that it's not just one, um, you know, part of an industry. It's, it's, it's all over. There's, you know, people that will unfortunately take advantage of, of folks, you know, whether they're a plumber or a, a tradesperson or, you know, psychic or whatever. There's, there's folks that'll do it, uh, it's, it's a valid niche. point. Yeah. It's a very valid point because you're right. They're all over the place. They'll come at yep. you in every yep. angle. Yep. I mean, there, there's a rather significant segment going after the, um, uh, the, the COVID relief stuff that's coming out. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, and I think it's been more prolific when, you know, obviously everybody's on social media, all these different platforms. So there's more opportunity yes. to get in front of more people. And to try to, um, you know, try to, you know, in a sense, scam. But um, sorry, I just, I just want no, to add that right. because I was like that. I need to bring up that point because I don't want folks thinking, well, it's, you know, and I know that people, you know, have encountered people that, you know, uh, are, you know, not. Not, not the what they up. seem. Yeah, not on the up and up, as they say. Right. Yeah. So. No, I agree with you. And, I, and that's, well, that's exactly where my story goes because, um, I, I share your, uh, your belief that, yeah, it's pretty widespread. And I, I like confronting it whenever I can, I, because if I can help shut it down, I love helping to shut it down. And I have helped shut down a number of things, which is kind of, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't, you know, earn me a living or anything like that, but, uh, I feel better. And hey, this is all about feeling better, right? So <laughs> I work on feeling better in that way sometimes, not all the time, but occasionally. And I did on this occasion because, uh, I dug into it a little bit deeper. By the way, the answer to your question is they were actually using the Harvard logo. So unless this person was claiming that that was his coat of arms, I think that kind of, you know, it makes, it kind of negates the idea that his name was Harvard, you know, <laughs> I can't rule that one out, but you know. <laughs> My my first name's Harry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> like, well, well, actually, it was better than that. He he identified himself as David X. Ooh, and mysterious. the reason the reason he says that he's David X is that he was born into a one percenter family. He was born into a wealthy family. He lost everything, and then he was exposed to this thing through a friend, and the thing turned things around for him and helped him make a comeback. And as soon as I read that, I said to myself, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right, sure, I buy that one, yeah. <laughs> so I dug into it a little bit deeper, and, and he actually did something interesting. He, uh, well, first of all, he presents it as a, as a video, but he also has a link that you can click on if you just want to read it. And it's this long, 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 long script that he reads in this video. And at the bottom, though, he's got footnotes. You don't see that too often with these things. He had footnotes at the bottom. And in the footnotes, he had um, references. I think they, I don't think they were actually linked, but they were references with URLs to various uh, sources. And included in there were some Harvard positive psychologists that I recognized, including Sean Aker and uh, uh, Dan um, Gilbert. I think his name is. And I thought, okay, so that's probably who his Harvard scientists are. So what is it that? that he claims that they have demonstrated or that they, what evidence that they're presenting. Now, like many people, he, he said it, it's, it's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. And, and that's one of the first points I want to make that science never proves anything. And anyone right. who claims otherwise is lying to you because they're, they're, they're the ones who are probably trying to pull the wool over your eyes, regardless of whether they're scammers, right. they're scamming you in some way because science doesn't prove anything. Science is not engaged in proof. That's for proof is for mathematics and, and court systems. It's not for, for science. Um, so with that first point out of the way, he was claiming that there, there's tremendous, all these studies have demonstrated that, that this one secret technique works so well. And, and the way, the only hint he gave you as to what the thing was, was his friend handed him some headphones or earbuds that were connected to a smartphone and said, listen to this. And so he listened to it for a minute or two. And the guy said, how do you feel now? He says, Oh, I feel better. And he That's claims it. that 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 thing that felt better helped to change in his in, in his words, it changed your mind's polarity so that you would no longer be resistant. You would no longer engage in limiting beliefs. And his his headline claim was that this was based on research by Harvard scientists. 
that was the part that when, when I, when I saw that, that presentation, I said to myself, okay, these guys are going down because <laughs> I, unless they've got something I haven't heard about, which is always possible. I was, right. I had, my mind was open enough to find out that they actually have something, but if they don't, I'm going after them. <laughs> so I followed up first of all on the videos that um, he, he linked to. There was like a Ted talk and I think there were two Ted talks. One of them was Sean Aker. Um, the other one, Dan Gilbert, and there was a third one. I can't remember who that one was, but I, I checked them all out and I compared what they said in their talks to what he claimed in his article. No connection whatsoever. Hmm. Absolutely no connection. But the only thing that they connected was that the Dan Gilbert one talked about different ways that the brain tricks us, so to speak, into making decisions that work against our own best interests. That was about the closest it came to validating his claims. So I said, okay, well, yeah, now I know that his, his sources aren't any good. Well, the product was a $39 product. I said, okay, who, who's this going through? Do, am I paying him directly? No, I'm going through this thing called ClickMag. And anybody who knows ClickMag, you know, it's, it's an independent outfit. They're, they're a little bit on the shady side, but they've been around long enough that they don't give you a hard time if you come at them and say, look, no, this product I bought isn't any good give my money back, you know, they, they will give you your money back right away. So I figure, okay, th this is pretty safe. It's only 39 bucks anyway, you know. So I decided to make the purchase. Now, I mentioned that the key quote was that his friend had handed these headphones and said, listen to this. And the first thought that went into my mind was binaural beats. What would he, what could he be listening to? And that was the first thought. And I said, nah, it couldn't be that. <laughs> Guess what it was? It was binaural beats. <laughs> And it was, the product was basically these three recordings. You're supposed to listen to them. The first one, uh, once a day for seven days. The second one, once a day for seven days. The third one, once a day for seven days. Uh, each one's about 20 minutes long. So you're basically listening 20 minutes a day for, for three weeks. And it, the, the first one, each one is a little bit different, but the first one is binaural beats with an ocean background and some wind chimes. The second one is the binaural beats with, uh, what was that one? I think it was like tropical sounds and, you know, it was that kind of a thing. You know, you can find hundreds of them on YouTube like that. So, okay, well, now I know what he's selling. And I also know that, first of all, he didn't mention the word binaural beats anywhere. I happen to know what they were. I suspect you probably know what they are too. But, you know, he was taking advantage of the fact that hopefully from his viewpoint, a lot of people didn't know what it was. So, you know, they never heard of this before. And because I knew what to call it, I knew how to research it. So I researched to find out, had Sean Gilbert, Sean Aker ever talked about binaural beats? Nope, never, never did as far as I can find. Neither did Dan Gilbert. In fact, the research that I did find said that the scientists who've investigated it, the most they've been able to find is that if they do a certain kind of setting with, you know, a certain kind of test with people and they got them wired up to EEGs and so forth, they can detect that some kind of a shift happened in the brain. They don't know what the shift is. They don't know what it means. They don't know what it produces. They don't, they can't really tell you anything other than some sort of a shift happened. So that was the closest we came to any kind of scientific evidence supporting this guy's claim. So I went and reread his original squeeze page and found he was claiming that there were lots of lots of studies backing these Harvard scientists proving that, you know, the, that, that this would actually change your, your, your whole mind and basically, um, Eliminate your limiting beliefs. I thought to myself, well, that's a clear case of fraud. <laughs> so contacted ClickBank and they didn't even hesitate. They gave me my money back instantly. And I said, well, I don't want just, I don't just want my money back. I want the guy shut down. And they, they promised me they were going to uh, submit it to the fraud department. They were going to investigate it. So I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, will they follow through? I couldn't tell you, but I went as far as I could with it. And I came away feeling pretty good. Like, hey. This was only one example of you know, a fraud, fraudulent scammer, but I put a dent in his armor at the very least. Maybe I got him shut down. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So just wanted to tell that little bit of a story. Um, then there was also another thing that happened. This was really weird. Have you ever heard of a cloud service called Advisory Cloud? Oh, yeah. I got a subscription. You got I'm, one of those. I'm kidding. I'm messy. Yeah. I've never heard of that. You never heard of it. Okay. No. I had never heard of it either. I got one of those 
and uh, they, they wanted you to do a 15 minute call. And I said, Oh, what the hell? Let's find out what this is too. Cause the way they, they, it was pure hint. I mean, they weren't even promised anything. It was just this hint that you're, you, because of your extensive skill set that you developed over the years, they're going to find advisory boards to companies that you can get on to help provide uh, some of the stuff you've learned over time to them. And there was the hint that you could get paid for it, but they didn't actually say that, you know, so it was very vague. So I got on the call just to find out what it was all about. And uh, turns out that it's a membership service where I'm supposed to pay them $300 a month to be in for this service with no guarantee that I'm going to get any money out of it and that, or that any of the, uh, the boards will actually work out. And so I, I basically told them what I thought of that and that call ended really quickly, <laughs> but you know, so there's, there's, that wasn't directly related to uh, law of attraction or conscious creation. It's just that was more of a general one. But I figured this this is a good topic. This is something that I think needs to be brought up. Dealing with the stuff that's out there, there are lots of examples of it, like you just mentioned a moment mm-hmm. ago. I just told a couple of quick stories that happened in the last 12 hours. Yeah. There's one other thing I want to mention, too, that I I don't know. You'll have to tell me how prevalent this is from your perspective in terms of how well known it is. I know about it really well because I worked in IT for many years and I'm still very much tied to the IT world, so to speak. And that's the the, uh, concept of ransomware. And for those who don't know what ransomware is, that's where that, that's one of the main uh, purposes behind the malware manufacturers, the people who try to get malware on your computers through clicking on a link in an email or something like that. Um, and the purpose of the malware is to basically lock up your files. And the only way you can get your files unlocked is if you pay them a ransom. Hence, hence the, tame, the, the term ransomware. And that's become pretty serious. But the ransomware um, people have become pretty aggressive. They are actually shaking down governments local governments, even state governments in some cases, hospitals, corporations, they're shaking down as many people as they can. And uh, a lot of them pay ransoms in the millions and millions of dollars. So it's, it's again, a pretty serious situation. It particularly became serious in the last year with COVID because with more and more employees working from home via computer, that gave the ransomware people more openings to get into networks, into corporate networks with, with their nasty stuff. So there's another example of it. So, I guess I just wanted to talk about with you. First of all, we should talk about it from the law of attraction perspective of, you know, how do you avoid this stuff? How do you, how do you keep this stuff out of your life? And then just also kind of get your perspective. I mean, first of all, are you familiar with the ransomware thing? I kind of wanted to, to plumb you on that one. Yeah. Well, I've heard of it for it's, it's been around for years. I've, I've heard yeah. of it. I've been mm-hmm. aware of it. Okay. Um, I have not, you know, obviously I haven't experienced anything or anything. I hope you don't. <laughs> well, and, and I, and I'm not on one that I don't either, but mm-hmm. you know, the thing is, is, you know, some, uh, you know, real, I guess, computer basic safety steps, you know, if you don't recognize where it came from or if it looks fishy, it probably is. Don't open it, delete it. Don't even click on it. Right. Just, you know, delete it. Uh, By the way, there, there's a trick that many people don't know about, but I want to tell people: if if you've always if you've been tempted to click on one of those links, but you weren't sure, especially if the email claims to be from you know like Microsoft or Google or Apple or something like that. Well, chances are it's not. And the cool thing is, they want you to click on a link. I can't say that all email programs will do this, and you can really only do this with a desktop or a laptop. It don't, it doesn't work as well on a smartphone because you can't hover your mouse, so to speak, over a link in a, on a smartphone. But you can with a desktop or a laptop. And if you, if you hover your mouse over that link, usually in the bottom left corner, depending on the app, you'll see what the link actually is. It'll tell you it's oh. HTTPS slash slash, you know, colon slash slash yep, yep. www.microsoft.com if it's actually from Microsoft. Yep. If it's not from Microsoft, it'll be from joeblow.nl or something like that. Well, and the it, other thing I was going to say, too, is if it looks like a pretty legit email, you have it open, but you haven't clicked on any links. If you go up from the from, um, uh, you know, from address and you actually click on that, yes. or, you know, that'll usually... And it'll give you, usually it's like, it, like you said, if it's somebody from Microsoft, it'll say John dot Johnson from at Microsoft.com or whatever. It'll have a legit, um, right? There's, and, there's all, there is one problem with that though. 
because I do know email real well. And yeah. it's the reason why I mentioned the link one, because the link one's much more reliable. Okay. Um, if it's, if it's the email address, email addresses can easily be faked. Okay. It's very easy to fake an email address in the from section. Um, it's just because of the way the email standard was, was originally written and it was never actually changed, mm -hmm. which is kind of a sad thing. It, it never changed because the, the various corporations that are involved couldn't agree on a standard. So the standard was never actually reached. Um, and I keep hoping one of these days they will, but I'm becoming less and less optimistic about it over time. Uh, but no, you, sure. I mean, you're right. A lot of the time they'll show that yeah. it's, it's more like if it shows you an email address that you know is wrong, you can count on it being wrong. Right. It, but if it right. shows you an email address that looks right, don't trust that necessarily. Well, and really it goes back down to Walt. If you're getting an email that you're confused about, don't even open it. Yeah. Because if it absolutely is not, why would I be getting an email from these people? Delete it. You shouldn't be, then you shouldn't be. If you weren't expecting it or whatever, then I would say delete it. Um, and then call, uh, the organization or individual. And then, you know, so it's always better to call prior. Yes. If, you know, if there's a question versus clicking on something that you shouldn't and all of a sudden it's like, opening a door that you don't want to. But I want to say this, regardless of email, and that's a great point that you bring up about the email addresses. Um, but really, when we look at, when we take away the label of, of email or fraud, or and when somebody is doing something that is negative in nature, yes. so start using, changing the labels, changing uh, changing the game, right? And so when we really change the dynamic, there, there's negativity. There's, there's, uh, that negative energy out there. There's people, there's things that we don't want in our lives, but they, but they exist. Mm -hmm. These, uh, you know, the, the, the folks out there doing all these phishing schemes are trying to have, you know, they have viruses. They're trying to ransomware. All of this, we know this exists and that happened, the dark web, all that stuff, right? Right. And that's, that's a real thing. Um, but we also know that negative energy, negative people, the scammers also exist. How do you navigate the world with all of that? And then, but yet still find your sense of happiness. How do you, and the thing is, is it goes back to learning not only you know, you talk about it, some real basic building blocks, starting with self-love. So you understand and know and feel what love is, number one. But number two, understanding what their vibration, where they're coming from feels like. Exactly. That, that nasty, yucky, slimy, not positive vibration and saying, so use your intuition. I always, and if you can see my, I'm going to pan my camera down and I'll move my microphone real quick, but I also describe quick, it because remember in podcasts, yeah. let's just can't see the video. Right. So right. But, them. <laughs> so anyways, I, I have my hand over my heart and I have the, the camera pan down, but, and saying that, you know, look with your, the eyes of the heart and, and stay saying, stay heart centered. Look with these eyes, meaning pointing to my heart versus right. the eyes in your physical head. Because we can see things with our physical eye, even our third eye. Great. That's wonderful. But are you feeling into the vibration? Some, and nine times out of 10, you'll something, your higher sense of self, whatever, your intuition will be like, eh, that doesn't look right. You know, before any mall, you know, any of your antivirus or anything will pick up like, yeah, that's clearly a bogus email or, their offer is bogus or that just because we see it all the time, right? Uh, yeah. These um, these false millionaires on on uh, social media going to uh, I don't know, they going to a, a, a private jetway and they'll just take Instagram photos or right. trying to appear something. And really what it is at the end of the day, it's trying to appear uh, or make you believe something that isn't reality. Right. So you either partner with them or whatever, right? Or elevate them to a status, whatever it is. But as you know, talking about masking reality 
And so feel into it. What is your intuition telling you with this? Does it feel off? Does it feel slimy? You know, and, and you talk about, you brought up a great one, Walt, is they had a lot of that. They took time. That guy took, or whoever, the organization and the individual, took time to put a lot of this. If you didn't do your research, you'd be like, wow, they actually, you know, uh, you know, have a lot of great, credible resources. Oh, yeah. But and in I, reality, and I bet you I, I'm the only one who actually read the, the, right. the footnotes at the bottom. Your, Nobody ever looked at those footnotes, I guarantee you. you. got to do your due diligence. Yeah. And even, but here's the thing. Even if before you did your due diligence, something was telling you that it was. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, I know that you got a great analytical mind and you looked at really, you know, there's something that tells me that it's off just by this claim. But number two, intuitively, you knew that it's, it's like, really? You know, well, it's it, it was it, the spidey sense goes off. I mean, that's right. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the spidey sense, feeling. the intuition, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, it tells you, you know, eh, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, and 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 I'll always share this, and I always say it like this: it doesn't always mean that the individual is a super scammer. Doesn't always mean right. that they're an axe murderer either. Right, but. It means number first and foremost, which is huge above all else, you are not an energetic match with whatever they're selling, peddling, pushing, talking about. Keep walking. Yeah, love that. Keep walking. Don't stop. Keep walking because you're going to come across a thousand, uh, you know, offers of, Hey, you're missing this one thing or whatever it is, right? The claim and it's all over. And especially now social media has really gone to more of a, a video message base. Right. And so everybody is saying, you know, stop what you're doing. They're trying to get <laughs> your attention, the consumer aspect. Right. And, um, but the thing is, is, is rely on your spidey sense. Number one, uh, because, you know, how do we navigate in a world that is filled with this? Not only social you're, media. You're right. Yeah. The internet, uh, because that makes up a large part, you know, part of our reality now, because we do a lot of business and a lot of interaction. But also you think about bigger metropolis areas that, um, you know, billboards and interacting with people. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Hey, come on in. And I, you know, I think about going to places like I remember back in my military days going down to Tijuana. Hey, friend, you come in my shop. Right, right. right. And, everybody's, you know, trying to be your buddy and they want to mm-hmm. make a, 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 you know, a dollar or a quick buck and, and, um, you know, use your intuition. If it feels off, keep walking. Yes. You can figure it out later. Make sure that you're safe. Um, you know, and I also want to share too, is that I, I was just reading a, a story from a friend actually in our area talking about, I'm going to take it up a notch is human, tra- human trafficking oh, and, boy. you know, all these ploys about, hey, uh, you know, my car uh, ran out of gas or I mm. need a jump, you know, approaching women or, you know, kids or whatever. Right, right. People kind of casing different stores and it's obvious that they're doing different things. And um, so, you know, that exists around us and we're not and Walt and I am not trying to paint a bleak picture by any means, but p- trying to bring awareness to that it exists. Yes. And how do you navigate in a world with all this crap? How well, you, you said walk- it. You said yeah. it. You said and, it. You, well, you, and, you, you but, check how it feels yeah, inside. Yeah. Well, and the same thing, you know, like uh have a lot of friends that have uh, cows, a lot of friends that have horses. And, uh, you know, um, one time I, I did show up to a, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, they got a good laugh at me. They were, um, I showed up at their farm and, and I didn't bring any muck boots. Uh oh. And, <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, we got to walk across the pasture. And they were like, uh, where's your boots? And I was like, mm-hmm. dude, I don't live on a farm. Like I got my tennis <laughs> shoes. And they were like, yeah, you're going to probably get, you know, what on your shoes. Yeah, right. And so in the same sense of, you know, how do you walk through life without getting all the crap on you and saying, you know, the smart people put on boots mm. so then they can take off the boots and clean the damn boots later or whatever they need to do, but it doesn't ruin their day. Right. right? 
Okay. And so make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Make mm-hmm. sure that you're listening to your spidey sense. Make sure you're anti, you know, all the logical things. I get it. You know, make sure you're antivirus up to date. Make sure you're not clicking on stuff. Make sure you're listening to your intuition. Make sure you're practicing self-love. And, and the self-love is what drives it all. Because the people who get sucked into these yep. things, their self-love isn't high enough to yeah. feel comfortable to say, Good yeah, point. I don't really want that. A no, that's fix. not for me. This is a quick fix. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. It's almost gone. You don't want to miss <laughs> this right. one. Because if you do, it's not going to, you know, because exactly. they're trying to sell lack. Yeah. Make you feel, oh, I can't miss it. I got to do. Fear, fear, and, fear. Yeah, fear, 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 right? Or control or mm. manipulation. And trying to make you make either impulse buy, you know, all these markets. Which is based on fear because have you ever tried actually manipulating and controlling by saying, I'm going to tickle you? (laughs) It doesn't quite work as well. (laughs) Right, right. Instead of just doing it. It has to be fear based. That's the way to do it. Right. So yeah, that's a great point. And you know, it's, um, yeah, it's it, but that's, that was a great point. Walt is talking about. Self love. Um, Self love. So when you build it up big enough, then you'll be like, no, the spidey okay. sense is like yeah. built up. It it, it, yeah. it goes with it, right? That that internal right. feeling builds up as you build up your self love. It's a direct connection. I don't. Yeah, I'd be like, well, thanks, thanks for the offer, but I don't need your miracle serum for growing hair anymore. I get those <laughs> all the time. I don't know why. They must be looking in my window. Uh, you know, it's like all kinds of stuff, right? And it's like. Really, you know, especially my, my Gmail account seems to just get all kinds of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's just silly. And yeah, but that's what they do that. I mean, and I think we should remember, do we live in this world of contrast deliberately with intention? Yeah, we do. I mean, we came here to, to experience this place, to experience this place where when we create something, it actually lasts for a while. We were talking about the other day. Um, and, not only does it last for a while, it changes slowly. You know, things, the law of attraction is always responding quickly, but we find the way that it plays out can be really slow over time just because we're living in this, this kind of mucky world where it's right. all low, vi- right. a lot of low right. vibration stuff going on. You know, so we came here to deliberately deal with this stuff and, and to learn from it and understand it and to a certain degree play with it. Uh, but when we're uh, doing it from a, a, a low love or, or not enough love, perspective that's when we're going to get into trouble that's right. when we're going to get into no. you know making yeah. the bad decisions and and feeling yeah. the neediness and yeah. and being subject to the people who are trying to make us feel afraid whereas when we're building up the self-love then they're all of a sudden they're, they're just not effective anymore they just you can't also, seem to, to pull it off anymore have you also noticed walt like if you've ever maybe personally been in a in a space of less of feeling less self-love right Mm -hmm. and it and i don't know maybe it's just me but you know maybe in past years where i needed more work on my self-love i noticed that the volume of spam or just oh yeah you know and it's just where are you guys coming from because it just i think i I can give you an example of that right now i just told two stories that happened in the last 12 hours guess where my mood was over the last 12 hours I was discouraged about stuff right. not working out in my life. That's right. the space I was in. So, yeah, direct connection. Sure. Discouraged stuff shows up. Like, Duh. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> it Isn't is interesting. interesting. Yeah. 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 It's amazing how that stuff works. I know, right? But I also like to flip it around and remind myself, you know, for instance, here on the show, when, when we bring in a new concept, we talk about maybe a spiritual practice, maybe a psychic practice or whatever. We lay out, that's what this is. We don't claim any kind of scientific evidence for it. We don't claim any kind of, you know, we don't claim science at all. We simply say, this is what we believe. This is what we've experienced. You know, you believe what you want to believe. Um, we're fine. We're fine with that. But you and- should act today because it's so for a time. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't say that. <laughs> the only thing we say that about is downloading the Yellow White Today keep app. A light. I got to keep a light. <laughs> we just said that about the Yellow White Today app. We oh, oh sorry, advice. sorry. Wrong. <laughs> But no, no, you're right. I mean, we, we, we don't say that. And right, right. I think that, that it's an important principle to remember 
because if we really do want to work on building that self-love, if we really do want to work on staying in that higher vibe space, yes, we are going to interact with the stuff at times that we don't like, but the more that we can remind ourselves to stay on the side of the angels, I guess is a way to say it, to stay on, on the side of, you know, don't need to go out of your way to do harm. You don't need to go out of your way to encourage harm and you don't need to go out of your way to claim things that you know aren't true. Right, right. Because this is part of, I mean, the, 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 the kind of slippery slope here is that the people who are scamming are in some ways conscious creating. They are literally engaging in a practice of imagining something that isn't there, which is conscious creation. And they are attempting to create a new reality. The challenge, the difficulty, is that the new reality they're trying to create involves scamming somebody else. In other words, they're not creating for themselves. They're creating miserable for somebody else so that they can profit from that, which is not really the same thing. It's a very fine line. Well, you know what? I would counter with that, Walt. Um, you could almost look at it as somebody that is scamming or conscious creating on the negative scale, right? Mm -hmm. Is could almost be in a direct reflection, but in an opposite polarity. So if you think of if right here where my hand is, I'm making a linear, you know, line, you think of a, a kind of a plane of existence and on mm -hmm. one aspect is the positive vibration of whatever interaction of manifesting financial abundance, we'll just say. Okay. In a positive aspect, whatever that is. And on the direct, complete opposite polarity would be manifesting financial ab abundance, but in a negative polarity or way, right? Mm -hmm. And so almost because they always say that, you know, the theory of, you know, a negative or there's always a, uh, another dimension or, you know, there's, there's aspect, but something's different about it. And maybe it's just on a, you know, and whether not that we certainly want to experience that, but just saying, it's kind of curious to me saying, you know, is that a different aspect of, Hey, they're on a different channel, so to speak of, because a lot of times when we talk about, hey, we're thinking negative or we bring in negative stuff, we'll change the channel. We need to change your channel or change our plane of existence connecting to that plane of reality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that might be one way of looking at it. But I, I was just kind of thinking about that. And I was like curious because could that be – I mean, obviously, it's direct opposite. But, you know, could it be on the polar – aspect you think of a of a scale right and on one aspect is the 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 positive abundance aspect of, of manifesting in the other side of the scale is the complete opposite but still in the abundance aspect and those scammers doing the manifesting of abundance but doing it <laughs> in a manner mm -hmm. that is not positive Mm -hmm. Right. Taking advantage of other people or their whatever the case is or being sneaky about it or whatever. Right. Well, if abundance is energy and I think we can agree that essentially that's what it is, everything that we would describe as being part of abundance is energetic. Money is energetic. Um, even labor is energetic. Um, the various things that we acquire in life and so forth, they're all energetic. So basically all forms of exchange, all forms of economic interaction, they're all energy. And so the question really becomes, how do you want to use your energy? Do you want to use your energy to bring back to yourself stuff that is low vibe? If you do, then start scamming people. And inevitably, there's going to be people who will recognize, well, there are you know multimillionaires. I can think of a couple off the top of my head who pretty much got there by scamming people. Now they basically, you know, they, they never, in many cases, perhaps they never actually crossed the line of the law, so to speak, but they, they rode the edge pretty hard, you know, and maybe sometimes they, they, you know, dipped a toe over to the other side. So, you know, they, they kind of lived in the gray area. And in that way, they were able to kind of semi scam their way to the top. Um, and, and there are plenty of people who are just, they don't have any conscience in that regard. They don't have any, uh, 
scruples to, to keep them from doing that. And I'm sure we can all think of people like that. But the thing is, we forget this part, and that is, what's the rest of their life like? We automatically assume if they've got all that money or they got all of that you know, power and wealth, their life is good on the other side. And yet when you look closer, you find, no, no not really. Their life yeah. is actually very non-abundant on that side. I, well, I don't think uh, they're not happy. You know, it's, uh, you know, they're always, um, there. there's something certainly sorely missing in their lives that, you know, that they feel that they need to continually continue this, this, uh, how do you want to call it? It's a pattern. Uh, un, uh, yeah. Un, unhealthy cycle, this pattern yeah. of, of, uh, you know. And that pattern continues very much for what you're alluding to for that reason, which is that. They don't know any other way to do it. They haven't fully grasped how conscious creation works. They understand some of it. They don't fully grasp that, for instance, the law of attraction works in everything, not just in the stuff you're trying to get. It, it affects every single aspect of your life that you give your attention to. So it never really occurs to the scammer. That's one of the reasons, I guess, that they don't have the conscience. It, it never occurs to them that when they're scamming somebody, that scamming behavior is going to boomerang back to them in some way. They just kind of skip that part. And because they don't actually go to prison or they don't get assassinated or they don't get beat up by the mob or something, they figure, well, you know, I got away with it. But they don't. You never actually get away with anything. Because the idea of get away means to get away without attendant consequences. And the fact is everything has consequences, good or bad. There's always going to be attendant results. That's what a consequence is. It's, a, it's, a, it's the attending result. There are always going to be attending results. And the attending results aren't just that abundance of stuff that you're accumulating. There's also other forms of, of what follows. So I think that's the, the, to me, that's the delineator. It's remembering that no matter what it is that you're attracting into your life, there are, there are always attendant results that go along with that. And if you can be true to that and true and, and, and honest and say, okay, I'm willing to go with whatever those results are. I'm willing to go with it, whatever those consequences are. Then you're becoming a better conscious creator. And you're probably going to end up making better choices. You're probably going to end up making choices more often that really do feel good to you rather than making choices. I, I think what happens with a lot of these guys, even the ones who have no conscience, is they, they end up making choices that are least bad to them in terms of getting to the thing that they want. They don't, they're like... As, as long as, as they, they get as little resistance as they possibly can get uh, from whoever they're taking advantage of, well, then that's okay. That's good. They feel good about that. But do they really feel good? That I, get, I think that's what my point is. They aren't really feeling good. They're, they're feeling their version of good, right? You know, they're, they're, but their right. scale is stunted. Right. It's, it's like a stunted scale. Like They don't actually know what joy feels like. For them, good is like, oh, well, geez, I'm not in pain, <laughs> which is really right. not the same thing, you know? It's, it's like, well, if, if I don't feel pain, that means I feel joy, right? No, it's not the way that works. <laughs> so I, I, I guess it depends on what everybody's uh, definition, personal definition is of, you know, what their value scale is. You know, what is joy to you? What is depression? What is boredom? What is, all, you know, all the stuff in between? Um, and I suppose it's going to be different from one person to the next, but I, I just know every time I, I look, so to speak, through the eyes of somebody who has tried to scam in some way, to defraud in some way, to um, pull the wool over somebody's eyes. Inevitably, I see somebody who isn't experiencing a whole lot of joy. And ultimately, what they're learning, yeah, they, they've, they've achieved a certain degree of control over their own ability to create. But what they're learning is a very limited form of creation. It's not, from my perspective, I don't know about yours, well, I think I probably do know from yours, but from my perspective, it's not a very satisfying form of creation. Mm. And and they demonstrate that it's not satisfying because they keep doing it over and over again. They don't seem to get any happier, which is a pretty odd thing. I mean, you'd think at some point they'd say, well, geez, I'm not really liking this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd bring that in because, no, uh, and I want, oh, I want to tie in the science thing again too. Because I really do believe that it's important to be welcoming to science from our perspective, from our spiritual perspective, the law of attraction perspective, conscious creation perspective. 
because I want them to be a part of it. I want I want them to feel comfortable exploring it a little bit what and considering if you're it. Not? What's that? What happen if you're not? If I'm not what? Uh, open and abiding to science. Well, I'm, I'm not going to get a whole lot of I'm, it. <laughs> I'm asking a rhetorical question, I guess, but you know, and because I guess the aspect that I come from, Walt, is you know recognizing and validating where everybody is, regardless on the scale, whether, mm-hmm. you know, somebody is the skeptic, cynic, very oh, yeah. staunch, you know, very fact-based, oh, sure. scientific, um, and, and trying to be accommodating to everybody's views. But, um, you know. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking of, in terms of, of everybody's got to come over. Well, I want, no, but... I, I'm, I'm thinking that for those who are ready to, for those who, who are willing to explore beyond the bounds that they've been taught in their science yeah. classes, um, I want them to feel like it's okay to explore this a little bit further. And one of the reasons I want to do that, I, I have a you know very direct reason for wanting this. I want particularly medical science and biological science to explore the placebo effect more. Mm. And placebo effect is associated with us, among others. Sure, it's, it, it's, sure. it's like, you know, it, it's been considered outside of science or, or it's been like the bad boy of science. You don't really want to have a placebo effect that ruins your results. You know, it's that kind right. of a feeling. Right. And I, I want to see that shift because I do know that when an individual scientist has some kind of experience that's outside of their norm, you know, maybe they have a psychic experience. Maybe they have, I, I saw something with Louise a few days ago, um, scientists who had who had experienced out of body um what do they call them near death experiences mm-hmm. and this one woman she had literally her body was dead for i think it was an hour you know far oh, wow. longer than you know you would conceive that or that medical science would conceive that she could actually recover from it and she actually recovered from it oh, wow. and, she, and she was able to tell stories about what she was aware of during that hour and it completely you know it, it basically blinded her not uh, blinded it um blindsided her in terms of her belief system about science, because she said, I, I can't limit myself the way I've limited myself before. I have to now consider there's this other thing that I don't know anything about. I can't explain it. I have no data to support it. I have only my experience, but that experience was so real to me. I've got to start giving cognizance to that. See, that's the kind of person that I want to encourage. And I, and I want them to feel like this is a, this community that we're in is an approachable community. It's not it's not full of a bunch of of scamming you know crazies, <laughs> right? I want them to feel like they're going to actually find people who are sympathetic right. and you right. know able to right. you know help them accept it for what it was they experienced and things like that. You know the thing that I'm excited for when it comes to science is that science is slowly starting to bridge a. Dr- the, bridge the gap between spirituality, metaphysics, and the scientific world. They're starting to prove correlations, and it proves. And, it, and what I think is let's, exciting let's, let's be because careful, it gets, it's not proof, it's evidence. Oh, sure. Okay. It's mm-hmm. evidence. It right. shows a correlation right. uh, in these events and data and figures and all this great stuff mm-hmm. that um, there's validity in the claims and what's been really talked about for ages. Yes. And be like that to me, and it kind of brings it to a, you know, it, um, how do I want it to say? It, it brings it brings a sense of um, normalcy, I guess, into the woo-woo world. If <laughs> you will. And But what I love about it is saying, you know, showing that. I, I even love doing it when I teach classes. Saying, you know, here science has shown that, you know, and they even show or teach correlations when it comes to energy or different aspects of, um, and you can really use the correlations when, you know, um, scientific, um, how do I want to say, examples when you're talking about energy and frequency and, you know, all these other things. I think Mm -hmm. it's awesome. And it that's, is awesome. that 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 piece I'm just you know really excited for and me too and, uh, yeah it's encouraging actually because and we know of some I mean there are some who have already bridged the gap uh, the first one that comes to my mind is Dr Joe Dispenza I mean he came from a very scientific background he was a chiropractor he had medical background and so forth and 
what he does now in his workshops are almost pure spiritual conscious creation. I mean, he, he has completely bridged the gap. Um, others who are kind of approaching it, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's done some really amazing uh, research about uh, uh, quantum effects and biological quantum and so forth. I mean, just really interesting stuff. Um, and there are a few others, too, who, who are to one degree or another bridging that gap. But you're right. I mean, it is starting to happen. It ha- it's, it's limited. Let's be perfectly honest. It's, it's, it's a primity, pretty limited pattern so far. But I even notice it with um, medical personnel, with doctors. Um, we've had to deal with doctors the last couple of years because of uh, the situation Louise has been going through with her thyroid, and uh, which mercifully may be coming to an end. Um, but w- we ran into it with uh, her endocrinologist. Her endocrinologist was absolutely convinced that all of this woo-woo stuff was just that. But despite the fact that he was convinced of that, when we hinted at the idea that we believed in the power of the human mind to heal and so forth, and that it would enable her to get off the medication and heal her thyroid and so forth... You could tell he didn't believe it. It was very, very obvious he didn't believe it, but he didn't debunk it. And that's big because that at least, I'm not sure that makes it an open mind. I think his mind was fairly closed, but now he's got one more, uh, one more case, one more piece of evidence to show that maybe he should have an open mind about it because he's been telling her almost from the beginning, you're going to have to be on this medication the rest of your life. And then about a month ago, he called his office calls up and says that he's now directing her to basically wean off of it. And she's actually now off of it. And two weeks, two, two weeks from now, she goes in for blood work to make sure she gets to stay off of it. You know, so here's somebody he claimed 100% she was going to have to be on it for the rest of her life. And all of a sudden, maybe not so much. That that makes an impact, and it's and it's making an impact on people who are beginning to open up a little bit. And that's all it takes, getting that that little bit of openness to just consider a possibility outside of what they were taught in medical school or or you know in college and you know, pursuing their research degrees or whatever. That that's where it all starts to really come together on opening up the belief system just a little bit. Just a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah that's. Uh... You know, that's, yeah, that when they start having that experience, that's uh, some pretty powerful stuff for sure. It is. I, I wanted to ask you, have you ever um, explored the research that's been done with psychics? Because there, there are scientists who have tried to pursue, you know, how valid is it and what can they've been able, what is it, they've been able to prove that a, a, a psychic can actually do when completely isolated and so forth. Have you explored that research at all? I have not. You have not. Okay. No, I've seen it like where they've, where they've hooked psychics up to like, you know, brainwave monitors. And so when they were in the middle of doing readings, then different states of uh, brainwave activity and, you know, the, uh, you know, the, was it the hyperthalamus and the, the different regions in the brain are activated and, and then when it's at rest or just normal state. And so that, you know, some of that does interest me. Um, but of course I'm not a scientist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like some of it, I just feel, <laughs> you know, like, uh, very undereducated. I'm like, I don't know what that means. And, but the aspect of saying it is interesting saying, isn't that interesting when they, you know, and then they'll have them do other things saying, okay, well, we're going to have you do this, but it's not a psychic reading right. or anything that physic or, you know, spiritual, you know, does it, do we, do we get the same results? And so a lot of testing, I get that, um, which is interesting, but yeah, so I haven't been, uh, I haven't been involved in anything personally. Um, but, uh, yeah, so very interesting stuff though. It is interesting. Yeah. Um, something else that just occurred to me and I, I'm trying to recall the parameters of it. I I don't, I'm probably going to mess it up. Um, but I remember that there was news that came out in the past um, six months or so about quantum researchers. Um, they were testing a phenomenon and and I don't, I'm really fuzzy on this aspect of quantum mechanics. So what I'm telling you is probably not going to be an accurate representation. I'll, I'll give you that disclaimer up front, but it's as close as I can remember it. Basically there is a, a, a principle that says that if, and if, an, if something happens, if there's an occurrence or an event that happens in one place under given circumstances, it is possible to have 
another person or another thing in a different place experience it at the same time. And, it, and I don't know exactly how that works. I don't remember what the theory says precisely about that, but that's part of quantum theory. And they were able to actually prove that it was true, taking advantage of, I don't know how they did this, somehow connecting to some information from our nearest solar neighbor, Alpha Centauri. Mm. And they were able to demonstrate that something coming from Alpha Centauri, I don't know what it was, was matching something that they were doing in a laboratory in Sweden or wherever it was. And I thought, well, that's really cool. You know, there, there's an example of science starting to pull the strands together, showing that, you know, there, there, there's this, how else do we describe, describe it other than as a spiritual thing? And they themselves are kind of playing with it. Do we call this spiritual? I don't know what this is. Right. I can't think of any way they say, of how could it be, how can we get that information from Alpha Centauri that quickly? And yet we're getting that. Right. You know? Right. That, no, it's those little that. things that are breaking yeah. through. Yeah. No, I think that stuff is cool. Uh, for sure. For sure. In fact, there's a, there's also the, there was a fairly famous study. I, I, I should, really should look this one up because it's been a long time since I looked at it. I can't remember what species of monkey it is, but it's a particular kind of monkey that they had one community of them on one part of the world and another community in another part of the world. And they interacted with one of those communities and the other community acted like they'd been interacting with them. Mm. So they basically just picked up instantly on the same thing that was happening a half a world away. Did you know NASA Actually, this is pretty well, uh, oh, good Lord. What is, uh, uh, there was twins. They're, they're both NASA astronauts. The bald head guys, one yeah, is yeah. married to the, uh, is it the senator? The, the congresswoman from, the from congress Arizona. Woman. There you go. Yeah. And is it Gibson? Um, uh, is it could Commander be Gibson? I can't, like that. Uh, the name escapes me. I, yeah. my apologies. Uh, but everybody knows they're both, bald, they, uh, his bro- their brothers, they right. look a lot alike. I mean, bald, they do. Uh, bald headed. And, um, I think one wears glasses, the other doesn't. They both been to space. Um, yeah. it was interesting because they did a study when sending, I think it was the one that went to space for a year to the space the, the station. The space station, right. Yeah. Um, they did studies on both of them and the effects on, um, you know, if it was affecting the other twin. Mm-hmm. And I find that really fascinating. Yeah. And it's like, you know, um, hey, your brother went to space, but you get all the side <laughs> effects, you know, and I thought, yeah, that was, you know, it's kind of cool when that, you know, it probably not if you're experiencing. Probably not for them. Side, no. Yeah. It's like, why is this thing growing? I don't know, but, uh, you know, but it's, it's interesting to me because I'm like, you know, what is that? Like, mm. how do you, you know, how is somebody experiencing something and yet somebody that is not physically there? Right. I, I'll bring up a personal story real quick. Um, going back a number of years, I took a, a six month meditation course called expanding your light body from a previous mentor of mine. I took a six month mentoring course to figure out I didn't like, uh, or meditation course to figure out I didn't like meditation. <laughs> but that is beside the point. Um, but I want to share is that, you know, every time it was once a month that we physically get together, um, and sit and meditate. It was an all day thing when we get together. And there was one time, I think it was, um, I, I had, uh, uh military commitments at the time. I was mm-hmm. still very much in the military. And so I couldn't make one of the meetings. And um, so, you know, they did their get together and everything else. And the next time we met, there was one of the ladies that started. She was always kind of the jokester of the group. And she um, was telling a joke or a story or something that was kind of funny. And I looked at her and she was like, what? And I was like, you must be losing it. You told this joke last time. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I was like, you told this joke last time. She was like, you weren't even here last time. I said, I completely remember. And she said, you're right. I did. Yeah, she said, I told this joke or this story last month. <laughs> and what was so crazy because we were so connected, it was like I physically, rem- like you'd think of somebody, oh my God, you're losing it. You're telling the same story over again. 
Like I heard this, you know, I don't need to hear the story again. It's like, but I physically wasn't there. You were but, there. Yet, <laughs> but yet when I heard it, I'm like, I've already heard this. She was like, uh, I told it last time, but you weren't here. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, how did I know that? Right. Well, you're just validating that you're a very effective psychic medium. Yeah, it was something, <laughs> my energy, right? The residual, the residual energy. So how are we connected? What is that? And, cool. you know, how can you duplicate it? How can you, you know, and, and I always use a stick analogy. It's like how, you know, like poking at it, like what else uh, can it do? Like what else can I do? What, right? what else can I do? Right. And it's yeah. like, you know, God, that's so fascinating. Like what else, you know, and, um, you know, playing with it, like what else, what else are we capable of? You well, know? let's find out next week. I mean, give, give us, uh, some, some of your own personal research of what you've done that you've experimented with. Yeah. Maybe I'll have that. Maybe, you know what? Well, maybe, uh, maybe we'll have to do a little bit, see if we can, uh, do some, uh, control measures you and I. Yeah. We'll sure. If, let's do that. So, yeah. That'd be kind of fun. Right. Yeah. All right, let's see do that next week. Uh, you know, no, no ex- expectations. We'll just, just for fun. Let's just, just see. Stuff. Uh, yeah. So we'll uh, message back and forth and, and we'll report next Friday. Um, you know, what we experience and, and I'll <laughs> journal down what, uh, you know, when I took time to sit down and do whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it's like knock a, a glass off the counter, a plastic cup or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or see if, uh, hey, Dean, well, you know, get some uh, thought to what to do, that's all. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. on this date, this time, like, can you see like what I'm doing or can you pick up on, you know, so kind of some different fun stuff. Uh, let me, I'll, let me put yeah. my mind to it and see what I yeah, can come up with. You're, you're the second I, medium. So I'll see if I can uh, feed you stuff. Okay. Uh, well, well, maybe we'll, how about, I think it would be good to do it both ways. You think you, I can actually yeah, I, stuff so, up? I think so. Cause I believe all that right. we're all psychic. All right. So, yeah. So anything, any the gauntlet like, has been thrown down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shall remote view with you, Seth. All right. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that'd be kind of fun. It's, I um, think so. Yeah. And, uh, see what we can come up with to some different, um, and any listeners who want and, to, uh, send in suggestions yeah. that they want yeah, to, you know, that use would them be with the app too. Send some in your own suggestions. Things. And maybe yeah. we'll look up some too. It's some, Sounds some good. controls. Of course, we'll have to, um, put in some controls and different things to, uh, well, like any researcher, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do it in a very simple way. And then we'll think to ourselves, okay, so how could we have disproven that? And then we'll find a way to, to, to put the control and then we'll do another experiment. And we'll yeah, just there keep you doing go. Experiments. So I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so, good. Yeah, yeah. It's a date. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. Sounds great. <laughs> so thank you very much, Dean. And uh, we appreciate thank all you. your insights. Thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye.